On today's video, I'm going to break down my workflow for mixing AI with design inspiration to help create original graphics. So jumping right into this, the first thing I did was go on Pinterest and I found a windbreaker that I like the design and the body lines on. And when I say body lines, I mean like the graphic itself, not like the shape. <laughs> All right, the first thing I did was do a six color life trace just so we could get some color blocking done. After we life traced it, I just went through and removed the white background and some of the weird pieces. And then I started laying it out on the actual helmet to get an idea of how it'd like the position to be. And if I'm doing an actual helmet graphic, I will just use this as a starting point for inspiration, but not actually copy paste it into the helmet. This is just for the example itself. So I liked the flow of these lines and the way it added more interest. And after that, what I did was start going through and cleaning up some of the areas that looked weird and fixing some of the design language itself. After this step, I just took a screenshot, uploaded the image, and went into Mid Journey to start making some renders. After I got some renders from Mid Journey, I went through and selected some of the images that I found inspirational with different elements. Like on some of them, the visor was the only thing I liked. On the other ones, the textures and stuff like that. So I just isolated the ones that I wanted to use for inspiration. The way I use Mid Journey is actually just uploading my artwork to it and having it render out like fast graphic or something like that. So in essence, it uses my original artwork to render alternative options. And so again, this is just an inspiration stage. I'm not just copy pasting it and submitting it to a client, but this is a great way to start concepting and just kind of thinking outside the box sometime. After I had a game plan, what I wanted to do is actually choose some of the colors I want to use. You don't want to use too many colors in these kind of designs, or typically you don't, just so it doesn't get overwhelming. So I just tried to keep it down to around six colors. After the colors were selected, I started laying out some body lines. And the interesting thing about this is you'll see I ended up changing my mind about this whole graphic. Because I try to kind of use the inspiration and some of the body lines from the inspiration more than I should have. And at the end I was like, eh, I'm not really feeling this. So I wanted to pursue the original idea that I liked, which was the look of the jacket and the split. So all of this was just a trial and error, but that's part of graphic design. It's just trying different things. And usually when I'm working on helmet graphics for clients, I will create maybe, I don't know, just dozens. It just depends on how I'm feeling. Sometimes it can be 5 to 10, sometimes 20 to 30. And typically I'm... I'm usually just creating because I'm never completely in love with something unless it really stands out. But uh, in this case, as you'll see, I completely changed my mind because I was not feeling the direction at all. So after I decided to can that idea, what I decided to do is just start working on the original concept and designing on top of it using the inspirational renders from Mid Journey. And so from here on, you'll see how the design goes. The things that I try to keep in mind when doing this is keeping the flow, the motion, and how the graphic lays on the helmet and the visor and how it interlinks. Um, these are all very important things so you keep in mind it's just something you learn from years of experience. And just color balance as well, making sure there's not too much of a single color more than another, so that way the whole helmet feels very balanced from the different fundamentals of design. And the reason why this workflow is great to use Midjourney with is because a lot of brands will work with trends. And so if you're just uploading something to Midjourney and having it render more ideas, that sit on par with the original idea. It just gives you something unique, but also in line with the current trends. Because if you look at any companies and compare them side by side, there's a reason why they all look the same. It's not because they can't think of anything more original, it's because that's what consumers want. Fortunately, consumers aren't always very original. Everybody wants to be the cool kid, right? As you see here, a lot of the times I'm, when I'm exploring, I'll start with an idea and then decide to hate it and move back to a different idea. And this is all part of the design flow. It's like it's normal to change your mind. And a lot of times I'll just copy over a helmet graphic where it is if I want to explore some other options and just build upon that. So that way I don't ruin the original and that way I can always revert back and work on the graphic from a stage I did actually like it in. So at this stage I just threw in my logo just because I didn't have any other logo that I wanted to work with. I'll probably have to think of something for fun just for these kind of examples. But uh, the reason for this is if you look at motocross graphics, they always have the company logo on the side, on the visor, at diff different locations. So I thought it would be just another interesting layer of design to add to it. So I quickly messed around with that and placed it just for interest. At this stage, I wanted to add some fades just to add some texture and interest so that the color blocks don't seem too bland. And I just went through and used the colors that are already being used so that way it's not introducing a another color to the mix. 
And I also decided I wasn't really feeling the orange color, it didn't really add enough interest, so I just changed that to yellow as I felt that still balanced the graphic very well. And then adjusting the eye port in the bottom trim to just give it more color pop as well, so that way it's not just bland. And that's it guys, that's how I would use Midjourney to help myself with the design workflow when designing a helmet. At this stage I would make the other views of the helmet graphic and create colorways as well. That wraps up today's video. I appreciate you taking the time to watch it, and if you did get value out of it, giving the video a like and sharing it with another designer would be the best way of showing your thanks. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe. Lastly, if you have any questions, feel free to ask below and I will be happy to answer them.